<gasps> what? <laughs> I'm sick! <laughs> Hello YouTube world! Thank you for coming back to my channel. Today I'm here with you with something new, something I'm very excited about. Today we are going to be taking a 23andMe test. This is something I've always been excited about. My parents are from Haiti. I'm first gen Haitian American, so I have an, I kind of an idea of where my family comes. But I've always wanted to dig deeper and go farther and see where we came from in terms of like in Africa. and. Even though we don't have like the paperwork that necessarily will tell us that or anything that kind of can, this will help us kind of like trace back the steps a little bit, maybe give us like a, a history report backwards. So, you know, or say if there's French in me, um, that's obviously because Haiti used to be a French colony. I'm excited to see that. Before it was a French colony, it was a Spanish colony. So, and we're right next to the Dominican Republic. So maybe that might be something that you see. Um, I'm excited to see where in Africa we are specifically. I wanted to see if we're like cent central, northern, southern. To be honest with you, I do not know a lot about the sub um, gene groups in Africa because I know there's a lot of variety in Africa when you like go from state to state or country to country. So I know I, I'm not sure what who I look like. If you know in the comment section, let me know, what, what kind of African do you think I would be if you were to take a guess? Hold on, let me... Hold on, hold on, let me... What y'all think, what y'all think, what y'all think? Let me know in the comment section. <laughs> I'm ready, I'm excited to see the results. Cause I do feel like, as a black person, I do feel like once in my life, I should make a, um, a trip to the motherland, trip to Africa. But I kind of want it to be a little bit more special. Like, yeah, I want to go to all the places like Nigeria, Ghana, but if, if there's a place that I'm able to go to, like Benin or something, or t Tanzania, that's more like actually trace traceable to like my history i would love to go there so this will kind of get the get the ball rolling on that so hopefully i take um the african ancestry one next year i'm going to be doing two of those because you have to do one for your mother one for your father and one for your mother's side so it should be interesting to see i just can't wait to see my results honestly like whatever it is like even if it's 100 percent haitian at least I know now, you know, so. All right, you guys, let's get started. Man, that's wild, 40% off. When they open this up, okay, they give you a little booklet. Ooh la la. I would show you guys this step, but it's a lot of private information, so that's a no-no. So um, right now I'm going on to 23andMe.com slash start. Okay. My first name, my last name, autofill, thank God. Um, my password. So now I'm on the website. So now all this asking me is to put into my information, my email, my password. This is how they're gonna give me all my stuff. So let's get that done out the way. I need to enter the barcode of the sample tube. So which we will find in this thing right here. You see that right there? So what I'm gonna do is look at the barcode. Your kit is for the Ancestry and Trait Service. You will not receive health-related reports, but you will be able to upgrade to receive these in the future. 
Okay, that's cool. Thank you. Um, terms of da 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 and the authorities, unless required by law to comply with a valid court order, subpoena, or a search warrant for genetic or personal information. And that's on period. 23 Me research consent document. Why is 23 Me doing research? Aims to make support of scientific discoveries about genetics and other factories behind disease and traits. To do this, we conduct our own research and support the work of other researchers around the world collaborating and publishing our findings. I guess what all this means is that they're trying to help the world by collecting our DNA for Big Brother. <laughs> Whoopsie! Anyways, um, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. 23 me, come at me. I'm just playing. Um, and this person needs to be consent. Yes, you may contact me about research opportunities based on genetic information that is not included in my 23 MP report. Yes, if y'all tell me that I have like a super gene that, I mean, not for y'all to extract, but y'all need to, y'all need to put me on some wires. As long as you drop in that money, I'm here for it. We got that done. Here's the fun part. Upgrade for a hundred dollars. It's okay, baby. Skip for now. 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 Do not eat, drink, smoke, chew gum, brush your teeth, or use mouthwash for at least thirty minutes before prior to avoiding a sample. Check. Collect the recommended volume of saliva, the recommended volume of saliva to provide is about two milliliters or about half a teaspoon. Your saliva sample should be just above the line, fill line. And in the video that I was watching, they said that it has to be, it can't be bubbled. So just make sure you account for that. Um, provide your sample and add the stabilization buffer within 30 minutes. The saliva sample should be collected within 30 minutes and the final contents should be released into the tube immediately. Waiting longer than 30 minutes may decrease the yield and quantity of your DNA. Provide your sample and add a stabilization buffer within 30 minutes. Okay. Cap securely before shipping. Remember to remove and discard the final lid and place the tube cap securely before mailing your sample to our laboratory. The transportation supplies for your saliva sample are included in your kit. Dun, dun. Return your sample by dropping it. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Let's get this started. Okay, so we just read everything online. We just signed up. We just put in our code, our barcode for the um, saliva sample number. So all that's left is to get a sample. Okay, now they said everything should be in here. So they give you a tube for it. And then... So I assume I'm not putting it back in here. So this is the theme of that you have to use. Here's the cap that comes with it. All right, let me see if I can produce enough spit. So we have to fill it up to here. If you can't see, let me show y'all. You have to fill it up to here. Which, I mean, I guess is, Not that, I mean, not that bad. All right. I'm gonna do this off camera for the spit up old. I'm just trying to produce the live, y'all. I would say you fill the quota. Just 
just to show y'all. Bada boop. Build. Now we close the lid. Step two, no food or drink for 30 minutes. Check, check, check. Okay, so this is what the sample looks like, the formula in there. So now we shake it, or one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Five seconds. And final thing to do is plop in here, okay. So now we have it in this tube, in the or now we have it in the seal bag. Ship in box. Okay. Okay. So return the sealed plastic bag to the original box. Peel the strip and seal the box closed. Then ship. The plastic container is recyclable if you feel so inclined. Shipping has been prepaid, so you can just save your stamps. You've already used enough saliva. I'm sick. Thank you, girl. I was about to really put this, put that thing in the box. So I'll just put you in here. And all right, so I have to peel here. I'm gonna close it. Okay, everything's in here. So now we have to mail it and we have to wait for the results. It should be about three weeks usually, they say. So y'all ain't gonna see me for another three weeks. Get used to it. <laughs> anyway, so I guess I'll see you when we get the results online. They usually come online, so. All right, let me go mail this. See you in three weeks or see you when the results come back. Four to six weeks later. Okay. So like this. Okay, you guys, we have to take this. It's been a couple of weeks. We have. Ooh, hold up. Okay, you guys, we have to take this upstairs. It's been a month later, I believe. Maybe more than a month. I did it. No, it's been a month. It's been around a month three weeks, four, almost in four days. Anyways, um, I had to take this upstairs. It is way too hot downstairs. My parents keep the eight thermostat at 80, 85 degrees. Anyways, welcome back. We're back to see the results. The results came in yesterday. They said they were gonna come in the third and then they said it might come in the 10th and then the 17th. But luckily it came in on, what's today? Today's the eighth. It came in on the seventh. Um, ooh. Before we start, Happy New Year. I know this is like technically my first video of the new year, so happy 2022. Love and many to all of y'all. Tigers, my year of the tiger people out there, February 1st, get on your bed. We have bad luck coming this year. So, you know, positive vibes, love and money to you all. All my year of the tigers, start wearing more red. And make sure somebody gifts it to you too. So, just wanted to let you go, let you know that all that stuff. I'm very excited. I'm like, this is really interesting. I know not everything's accurate, but um, especially with 23andMe and Ancestry, but the more people that take it, the more they can get an idea of things. So hopefully, you know, me throwing my little coin in the pond, 
that helps make a difference. So, you know, it's all about pan-Africanism in this place. I will accept anything that happens. If I'm Haitian, I'm Haitian. If I'm Ghanaian, what's up? If I'm Nigerian, my Nigerian people, y'all gonna need to show me how to eat fufu, how to wear my dashiki. Y'all gonna need to know. I'm gonna need to learn how to wrap the babies around my back. Y'all gonna need to show me. Woo! I'm a little hot, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. Hold up. <laughs> We're gonna get started. We're just gonna go into the results. No more hassling. You already know. You already know what I think. Um, we already been through the process. So I'm really excited. Hold up. Come on. But yeah, so we're, this is a very, very important time. We're about to reveal the results. Okay. Sebastian, it's time to learn more about your DNA story. Your ancestry and trait results based on your DNA are now available. So ancestry traits. Oh, they can tell you your next report, Neanderthal, parental haplogroup, genetic weight, maternal haplogroup, bunions. <gasps> they can tell you if you got, you're going to get bunions. I'm sick and I'm interested. Okay, anyways, let's start with the ancestry. I don't think the traits really matter that much. So my genetic composition. I don't know what it says. DNA relatives, see all relatives, um, explore traits. The report. Oh my God. Okay, y'all. I see a lot of purple and blue right now. <gasps> what? <laughs> I'm sick. Quang, 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 quang. Quang, 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 quang. Breaking news. Okay, you guys, I mean, I'm going to put a, hopefully I'll be able to put a screenshot right here or right here. I don't know which one thing, but y'all, it'll be on the screen. But, um, so I am 86.5% Sub-Saharan African with West African being 65.6%. Girl, I'm Nigerian. I'm not GB yet. Hey, I'm not GB yet. 37.8% girl. Ijama, girl, you know exactly what I'm talking to you. Y'all gonna need to show me my dashiki, my fufu. <laughs> eh. Um, Ghanaian, Liberian, Sierra Leonean, 15.5%. Um, Senegambian and Guinean, 1.9%. That might be one of the filler numbers that I keep hearing about when they're really, really low. Broadly, West African, 10.4%. I mean, okay, yeah. You see, West African, most of the people that came from the slave Atlantic, uh, the transatlantic, most of the people that came from the transatlantic slave trade are from West African, are from West Africa. It's because of a war that, there, that was going on over there. And most of the slaves ended up being POWs from the two sides. So the people, to so the people that like to say black people like sold each other, like black people did slavery too. It's not the same. It wasn't the same. So cut that out. It was POWs that they were selling off. And as it's still fucked up, yes, but it wasn't like they saw each other as black people and decided to sell us to other people. They saw us as prisoners of war. So cut that out. Anyways, so the next part is Congolese and South Southern East African, 18.8%. Um, Angolian and Congolese, 16.5%. Southern East African, 1.1%. Broadly Congolese and Southern East African, 1.3%. Okay, so I got a little bit of, what's it called? A little bit of East African in me. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, so you know, shout out to my Congolese people, shout out to my uh, Nigerian people. I will be learning about the culture from now on. I'm very interested now. Broadly Congolese and Southern East, Southern Eastern African, 1.3%. Hunter Gatherer, 0.4%. Okay. Um, Northern East African, 0.1%. Sudanese, 0.1%. 
broadly sub-Saharan African, 1.6%. I wonder if I can screenshot this, because I will. So yeah, 86.5% um, sub-Saharan African. Very excited about that. Um, European, 13.4%. Ah, I'm sick, y'all. I'm sick. Um, all right, so 13.4% European, Northwestern European, 10.6%, hmm, um, French and German, 4.9%, British and Irish, 2.6%, hey, what up, what up to all my Londoners, shout out to y'all, hello London, I love London, <laughs> oh my god, I'm sick, I'm sorry, um, Broadly Northwestern European, 3.1%. Southern European, 1.9%. See, I told y'all, Spanish and Portuguese, 1.6%. I mean, that might be a very low number. It might not really be registering. But the fact that that shows, you know, Haiti was a, um, a Spanish colony before it was a French colony. So it makes sense. And Portuguese, too. Portu the Portuguese bought the most slaves over from the slave Atlantic trade the transatlantic slave trade to Brazil. So there was around, I think, 2.2 million slaves that were transported into Portugal. So they have the most imported slaves. So that also makes sense. Um, Sardinian, is that where sardines come from? Hmm. 0.3% is probably not really there. Broadly European, 0.9% and unassigned 0.1%. Okay. See, and then it says recent ancestry. Let me screenshot this one. Recent ancestry, Caribbean, um, Quest Depart or OS Department, uh, O U S E S T Department, Haiti. That's true. I didn't have to tell them that too, so they knew. Um, the Dominican Republic. Is there more on that? Highly likely match, Haiti. Haiti has 10 administrative regions. We found strongest evidence of your ancestry in the following four regions. The OUEST department, the Artabonite department, the SUD department, and the Senate department. Hmm. I mean, my family does come from, I'm pretty sure my dad was born in Guanaive, if that's the name of it. I'm not sure if my mom was born there too, but I know, no, I'm pretty sure my mom was born in Port-au-Prince and my dad was born in Guanayi, but they all moved to, they all met in hate at Port-au-Prince and stuff like that. So us being from, the number one being from the OUEST department makes obvious sense, you know? But apparently we have a little bit of Dominican that comes from the Distrio Nacional and the Santiago province. So, I mean, it could all very be true. I'm not sure how much, but it all makes sense. It all makes sense. I mean, honestly, like, I'm not surprised. I am surprised, though, that I don't see Benin on this because that's where my family said, like, most of us might be from. And maybe we might be, you know, but it doesn't say so on here. Like, you know, the most that they saw was Nigerian. I'm more Nigerian than anything. Um, so... Uh, you know, we're European a little bit. Makes sense, makes sense. So I'm really interested in that. My friend invited me. She's Nigerian, so she invited me to go to Nigeria with her. And girl, after this, I'm going to have to take her up on it. Like, I mean, I already was. But now, like, girl, like, oh my god. So I'm really excited about this. I don't know why. Um, There's scientific detail. Like, what are the scientific details? What can you tell me? Okay, so there's some things that they tell you with the uh, information that they give you. It's like, although we've detected Nigerian DNA in your ancestral bre breakdown, we have not identified more specific locations that your recent ancestors may have called home. Which is fine because it's long ago and there's no there's no data on that. So, of course, they're not going to be able to. Sorry about that. Um, same thing as most of these places with like Ghana, Liberia. So, even though they found a lot of this stuff, they're not going to be able to tell me like specific geo groups or like locations for me to find, which is okay. You know, I mean, it's not okay in terms of like history wise, but 
for my terms of like accepting the knowledge like i am totally okay with it i'm totally down i expect to find you know i expect to do the ancestry test so hopefully they will give me a tribe that i can specifically look up to and that i can specifically find so i'm not even um uh, dang i'm not mad you know there could be more situations that i could be mad about and see, even though they say ancestry in the Americas, we found evidence of your ancestry in the following places. People from these regions can often trace their ancestry to different historical separate populations. So you see, Haiti, highly likely matched. Yes, baby, you, you hit that on the nail. Um, Dominican Republic, likely matched. They haven't found anything from the other Dominic, uh, from the other people in the Caribbean, so... I'm not Puerto Rican, not St. Lucian, not Trinidadian, not Cuban, not Dominican. The other, there's a country called Dominica, so it's different from the Dominican Republic. So I'm not that, not Martinician, I'm not Jamaican, I'm not Arubian, I'm not Bahamian, Bayesian, um, all those. They haven't found anything in Mexico, nothing in South America, like, so it's like, oh, you know? And see, your results are regularly updated based on new information. See the record of your results recalculation before. So they will update this the more people take it. So I highly encourage you guys to take it because if a lot of black people are able to take it, then we'll be able to find more connections, more groups, more pairings. You know, all of us came from somewhere. All of us came from a place in Africa. All of us are children of the transatlantic slave trade. So even though it won't give us like exact home like you know it won't hone in on like the address of where your ancestors used to be it will give you a general idea which is very much helpful for everyone else too it's all about helping each other so let's see if there's anything else ancestry composition i want to see if they give us anything else Um, they give you your parental inheritance. Oh, if my parents took one, okay. Um, ancestry timeline, do y'all have that? Hmm. <gasps> they do! <gasps> I'm shook! Okay, hold on, my thing's about to die too. Y'all, I'm not ready for this, but I'm still going. I don't even care. Okay, so in, okay, okay, okay. So from the 1730s, it's around the Sudanese, the Sardinian, the African hunter-gatherer, the Sengabian and Guinean. That lasts from 1730 to 17, to 1820. And then from 1760 to 1850, we have the South, the Southern East African, the Ghanaian, Liberian, Sierra Leonean. Makes sense. Um, okay, so um, 1820, 1850, Spanish and Portuguese, British and Irish. Um, Haiti did gain their independence from in 1804. So that's close. That might be close to right, you know. Um... Then 1850 to 1880 to 1910, there's Nigerian, French, and German, Angolian, and Congolese. Um, it's a very interesting timeline. I don't know how exactly accurate it is, but then again, I don't know my whole family history. I don't know if what's it called. My parents just were just got to Haiti right when it was freed and then just stayed. You know, I don't know where we were before that. I don't know. If my family was like traded around the slave Atlantic trade, the transatlantic slave trade all around the world, you know, they could have stopped in Portugal, then went to Haiti, then went to America. There's so many factors, so it's a good idea. But you know, especially the fact that Nigerian is so close to like now, I feel like we would have remnants of that. But my family has always called us black. Like we've always been black. We've never been the type of people who are like, oh, I'm Haitian. I'm not black. So, that's okay. Like, that's okay. This Ancestry timeline, it's a cute, cute little synopsis. How many generations ago was your most recent ancestor for each population? Like, girl, there's, I, 
maybe in 1850, like Nigerian, French, German, like around then, like. But it's cute. It gives a good idea. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so happy. Like, I have so many Nigerian friends. I have so many Congolese friends, or just one. But now I could be like, what's up? What's good? And, you know, we got some white people in us, the Northwestern, we got the French and German, the British and Irish, the broadly Northwestern European, the Southern Western, and the Unassigned. Very interesting. The maternal Hablo group, was that? Um, your maternal Hablo group is... I'll have to take a screenshot of that. As your ancestors ventured out into, out of Eastern Africa, they branched off in diverse groups that crossed and recrossed the globe over tens of thousands of years. Some of their migrations can be traced through Hablo groups, families of lineage that descend from a common ancestor. Your maternal Hablo group can reveal the path followed by the women of your maternal line and girls. Everybody, I want y'all to know, like, my mom's side is very much full feminine. Like, I have so many girl cousins. I have two sisters. Um, yeah. So, if every person living today could trace his or her maternal line back over the thousands of generations, all of our lines would meet at a single woman who lived in Eastern Africa between 150,000 years ago and 200,000 200, years ago. Though she was one of perhaps thousands of women alive at the time, only the diverse branch of her Hablo group have survived to today. The story of your paternal line begins with her. Oh, wow. Okay. So your maternal Hablo group, your paternal line stems from L2B, which arose from a common ancestor who lived about 21,000 years ago. The L2B is commonly found in Western Africa and the forested region of Central Africa. Members of the L2B group were swept up in the migrations of Bantu speakers that started nearly 4,000 years ago. From Central Africa to the East and to the South, and as a result, we can be found as far as Angolia, okay? Elsewhere in Africa, a few Moroccans and Egyptians, ooh, okay, carry the L2B as a, do a few Bantu speaking from Mozambique, but is predominantly found in the western part of the continent. The people taken by slave traders from West Africa across the Atlantic slave trade to the Caribbean and United States included members of L2B. And as a result of the Habo group is fairly common around among African Americans. Amen to that. Your maternal Habo group L2B1A2 Traces back to a woman who lived approximately 9,000 years ago. Okay. That's nearly 316 generations ago. What happened between then and now? As researchers and civil citizens research and discover your haplo group. Da -da -da -da. Um, okay. Today you share a haplo group with all the maternal line descendants with the L2B, including other 23andMe customers. One in nine thousand and three hundred okay that's interesting too so let's see the paternal one then do that report stories of your paternal parents can be can be traced back over two hundred and seventy thousand two hundred and seventy five hundred years just to one man Ooh, the common ancestor of Hablo Group A, current evidence suggests that he was one of thousands of men who lived in Eastern Africa at the time. However, while his male line descendants passed down their Y chromosomes, generation after generation, the lineage from the other men died out. Over time, his lineage alone gave rise to all the Hablo groups that exist today. Okay, that makes me feel special. You make me feel special. Feel special. Okay. Your paternal line stems from a branch of... Okay. I'm not going to read all of this. It's a little bit long. Paternal line across Western Eurasia rose about the 10,000 years, 10, years ago. No, 1,000 years ago. 
as the people of the Fertile Crescent domesticated plants and animals for the first time. Around 8,000 years ago, the first farmers and herders began to push e push east into Central Asia and north into the Caucasus into the Caucasus Mountains. Some of them eventually reached the steppes above the Black and Caspian Seas. There they live as pastoral nomads, herding cattle and sheep across the grasslands, while their neighbors to the south developed yet another crucial technology in human history, bronze smelting. As bronze tools and weaponry spread north, a new steep culture called the Yamnaya, the Yamma the Yamnaya, the Yamnaya was born. Around 5,000 years ago, perhaps triggered by cold, a cold spell that made it difficult to feed their herds, the Yamnaya, the Yamnaya men spilled, a car, east, spilled east across Siberia down into Central Asia to the west. They pushed down into the Balkans and to Central Europe. They sought new pastures for their herds and metals and metal deposits to support burgeoning oh my god not my into not my in, ignorance coming out the burgeoning bronze age commerce over time their descendants spread from central europe to the atlantic coast establishing a new trade routes and an unprecedented level of cultural contact and exchange in western europe the men from these steppes also outcompeted the local men as they went. Their success is demonstrated in the overwhelming dominance of the RN269 lineage in Europe. Over 80% of men in Ireland and Wales carry the Hablo group. <gasps> what? And as do 60% of men along the Atlantic coast from Fran Spain to France. The frequency of the RN269 gradually decreases to the east falling to about 30% in Germany, 20% in Poland, and 10 to 50% in Turkey and Greece. The Hablo group connects all these men, still others, in the Iranian Plateau and Central Asia, where between 5 and 10% of men also bear lineage. Okay. Your parental Hablo group traces back to a man who lived less than 8,000 years ago. RL2 is relatively common among 23andMe customers. Okay. 1 in 150. Okay. Your parental line ancestor with Nile of the Nine Hostages? Who's that? Who? If y'all know who that is, let me know. Um, the spread of the Hablo group RM269 in Northern Ireland and Scotland was likely aided by men like Nile of the Nine Hostages. Perhaps more myth than man. Nile of the Nine Hostages is said to have been a king. <gasps> Not me aristocracy. I'm an aristocrat. I'm sick. <laughs> um, have been a king of Tara in northwestern Ireland in the late fourth century CE Christian Christ era. His name comes from a tale of nine hostages that he held from the regions he ruled. Though the legendary stories of his life may have been invented, invented hundreds of years after he died, genetic evidence suggests that Yui Neil Dynasty, ooh, let me screenshot this so y'all can see this too. Yui Neil Dynasty, whose name's descendants, whose name means descendants of Nile, did, fa did in fact trace back to just one man who bore a branch of the Hablo group. The Yui Nile ruled to various degrees as king of Ireland from the 7th to 11th century in a highly patriarchal society of medieval Ireland. Their status allowed them to have outsized numbers of children and spread their paternal lineage in each generation. In fact, researchers have estimated that between 2 and 3 million men with roots in Northwest Ireland are parental line with descendants of Nile. Not me being the mega Markle of this family. <laughs> I'm sick. Oh my god. This is so cool. Potential group. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Okay, you guys. I think I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it.
yeah i love it i it's beautiful i'm not mad at it at all it is what it is it's history it's gene it's genetics you know at the end of the day it's science so even though this isn't 100 percent, i still love the fact that it showed me a little piece of history i'm glad to find out that that I am, you know, 80, 86.5% African. I'm glad to find out that I'm 13.4% um, European. It, it makes sense. It's cool to see it all in numbers. Cool to see, like, the, the strength of it. You know, these are some very high numbers. So, I'm very happy. So, yeah, guys, that's it. I'm so, I hope you guys, I hope this inspires somebody out there to take the test. You know, that's all you have to do. It might not be 100% accurate, but it is a start. It is history. If you kind of read up on what happens in these times, like some of these do line up, you know? So I just hope you guys are willing to take the test. I hope you guys do take the test. The more people who take the test, the more accurate it can get, the more people we can get on board. And hopefully, you know, we're all able to find peace in it, you know? So that's it, you guys. I will be taking the African Ancestry seat african ancestry sometime this year so pay attention to that i don't know maybe it'll be in the summertime and then in the winter time but we'll see we'll see it's expensive so i have to save coin for that i don't know why they're asking for all that and they're gonna give me one place this gave me like a, a nice little overview even though some of them might be might not be real they're gonna give me one place and they're just gonna make it look fancy so i'm excited though i'm excited i'm happy Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this to all your little Haitian friends. Show them. Show them that where we out here. Sac passe. Nula. Um, and yeah. So like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.